The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Newey Scruggs. Here we are, Thursday, everybody, Players Lounge Edition, and the survivor has survived. Danny McRae and his cast of Season 41. You saw him yesterday on CBS. Woo! Brother, that was uh, that was a, that was a show. That was a show. So, um, Danny McRae, former Dallas Cowboys safety, along with Barry Church, former Dallas Cowboys safeties, they are the players' lounge. I'm merely Newey Scruggs, the host. Uh, Barry's got the day off. Uh, got to do some daddy duty. Got to be daddy number one first. Uh, that's what we believe here on the show, and we'll we'll catch Barry tomorrow, uh, hopefully. Uh, I've got to go back into you. So here you are, the first tribal, first one, first, first tribal first for you yesterday, survivor man. That was uh, good to see everyone there sweating that thing out. <laughs> you know, where everyone wasn't eligible to be voted out, which is, which is unfortunate. But uh, it was, it was, it was actually a really, really fun moment because my tribe had been waiting to to, to experience that whole setting and that scene for like 13 days at that point. So we finally walk in and he asked me, "Hey, what are you compared to the other arenas that you played in? How's this one?" Yes. And I'm like, "Top five because." It literally is 12 of you, right? When you go out there with your team and people that have your back and you in the stadium, it's you on the field, right? The, the fans are in the stands, but it's you in between those white lines. And that place is, is 12 people. You have no idea who's going to stab you in the back, who you can trust. And, you, and you're also nervous about what questions Jeff is going to ask you because your answer could get you voted out. So it was, it was super intense, but super fun, though. So in the end, Sydney gets bounced. Uh, yeah, it's uh, unfortunate, man. Sydney's Sydney's cool. She's a friend, so uh, very very sad to to see her go. Uh, yeah, can't can't really say much about it about it. But on the next episode, I I, I assume you'll see the explanation for how that actually happened. But uh, the, you know, okay. And you wrote down Sydney, right? Or was it Evie? I wrote down Evie. Evie, that's right. Okay, Evie, Evie, Evie's who you wrote down. Um, I, I would I would never write down Sydney. Okay. Just just so you know. Okay, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to go back in my mind and just remember. Uh, so now that the show's over, can you say who you stay in contact with? Who who was a friend that you took from the show Survive? Well, I can't because literally five of the six people from my tribe are still on the TV show. Okay, so. If I say, "Hey, this, this, I'm still cool with this person," they're still, still cool with whoever. Exactly. Okay. And then it's like, that, oh, the, you know, I don't so, want that. So, yeah, I don't so want no. to. I do not want to reveal it. And that's been that's been a, the challenge as we've talked with you about this. Is we we know you're contractually. I mean, this is a contractual thing that you can't get into the details of. And I don't want you to lose any money or not get paid. So I do not want to violate that, and neither do you. So so I know some people. Are like, hey, why don't you ask about? It? It's it's it, you know, they don't understand the whole television contract yes. lingo. Um, <laughs> but me, are, me and Sydney are cool. How about so she's off the show now? Okay, we were cool when she got voted off, and we we are still cool. So that's okay. not giving anything away. Okay, um, just Sydney's a friend. It was unfortunate to see her get voted out last night, but it's a tough game. I don't like to see her. That's the one thing I just watched the show. <laughs> I don't like to see her, and and Tiffany is just like wow, trying to understand. But everybody loves Nasir. Everybody looks at the show and you know you, you see the comments and stuff and he's so, you know, I, don't, happy go I, don't, I I don't trust him. That's just okay. me. He's watching the show. Just watching him like man. That's you know, we talk about stabbing somebody in the back. He's one of he's one of those. Who did he vote for last night? Um, I think he voted for Sydney. I think they, they showed it. Like he voted for Sydney, which was you know she was not happy at the end. Uh. Boy, she, I mean that's that was when I said to myself, does security need to escort her off there? Or? Listen, <laughs> I t- like we talked about it earlier. I said think about it this way, right? You give up everything that you know for however long you're going to be on on that island, okay. right? And then Sydney is a part of a group who actually put in the work. They won a challenge. She was told that she was safe. She was in the merge. She then finds out that she's not safe and also not an emerge and has to compete. She's about half a second away from actually winning and then being safe. Emotional ride. And then she gets voted out and 
she's also not in the jury. <laughs> so she's going home. She's not even staying to be on the jury and vote for whoever's going to win at the end. She's going to the house, which is yeah, it's a lot to take in at that time. Reality show star <laughs> Danny McCray. All right, good good recap there. By the way, Danny has merchandise, Team Danny. Uh, tell everybody where they can go ahead and get some of that gear. Yep, at uh, shopteamdannymerch.com. That's M-E-R-C-H. Or you can click the link in my bio on my Instagram page, and that's at Danny McCray 40 Shirts started selling uh, yesterday. A lot of people were on my side about uh you know being lied to and stuff so so appreciate the support y'all we appreciate it. I didn't by the way I didn't like Jeff's question about the arena to you I thought he was trying to give away your your actual like what you are you know what I'm to, saying to 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 be fair they they edited it um and they didn't show what I actually said to him which was Jeff you know a little bit more about me um so you know that I'm a competitive person, and I didn't really like that twist. And that goes into him saying, "Well, I do know a little bit more about you." <laughs> so, you okay. you know, but he at that point he knows that I've told people that I played college football at okay. LSU, which is yeah. one of the biggest stadiums. I know, I know, yeah. you, I, know, I, know I, I assume that going into this, you didn't want people to know that you were a professional athlete because they think you guys make millions of dollars. Right, right, right. So and he not other, he, other professional athletes have been on that show. Have been voted off because, because they've of that. been made millions. Of yeah, dollars. so now he he he, yeah. didn't, he didn't give it away. I told people that I played at LSU and I walked on. So naturally, there are huge okay. stadiums throughout the college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I understand that. But, uh, but when he said that, I was like, man, this guy is telling <laughs> him. You yeah, know what I'm saying I don't think I hope nobody caught on. We, we'll see. Uh, we'll see as the show goes the, on. The and this is the part that I get that most people don't. How much? is shocked how much is said that you never see. Right. Which is surprising. Like, I knew, but now like that I'm in it, I'm like, huh? <laughs> What's on the cutting room floor will absolutely amaze you. Heart knocks. There's a lot of stuff that I'm out here watching, and I turn it on, and Chris Beam, you're the same way. You were out there during, yep. during Heart. You're like, what, where, where is this? Why isn't this a part of the show? I mean, they did a whole lot uh, with, with certain players, and I'm just like, I, I I didn't really get that, but that's how television works. It's a lot of stuff on the cutting room floor, and and, and said, we'll, we'll we'll talk during the break. <laughs> we'll talk during the break because I don't want to put this on because we got to protect you. Yes, I have to protect. Please. I have to protect them. Please, the, the please. McCray I don't I don't, I don't want I don't want to get an email or yes. any, any of that crazy exactly. stuff. Exactly. So, yeah. All right, uh, let's dive into the Dallas Cowboys, who are playing the Denver Broncos on Sunday, AT and T Stadium games at noon. Games at noon, in case you're going. Just tell people. <laughs> Don't show up at 325 or 720. We play at noon. And and leave early. This, this is just your friendly reminder. Man, you've got to set the clocks. You've know, got to do clock things. Mm-hmm. Go early, okay? Otherwise, you're going to be sitting. It, you will be sitting. There's, I don't care what NFL stadium across this country. If you're trying to get there an hour or hour and a half before, good luck because you're going to be sitting. Tell me this. So, so I live out in Plano. Okay. If I'm going to the game, 12 o'clock game, what time should I leave? It takes me about 45 minutes without traffic to get to Arlington, to the stadium, and park. Because that's that's a huge thing. Because you can get to Thank Collins you. Street. Right. But once you get there, it might take you another 45 minutes just to get to your parking spot. And then you most of the time you have to walk unless you're big time like new and you, and you park in lot six or lot one. Three. Um, <laughs> that is. You 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 need to be out the door by nine oh five, okay. Get, get yourself out the door by nine oh five. Sounds about right. That's 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 me saying you're going to get a little bit of traffic, but you'll you'll be in there and you'll be fine. Right. Yeah. You, you can get in comfortable comfortably and be able to watch the kickoff, get over whatever food you want, correct. Whatever drink, and then get to your seat without having to rush and worry about missing any part of the game. Correct. Correct. So just just leave. Early, so that's just my 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 public service announcement for all Cowboy fans, and that's for any any NFL stadium. Okay, it's just how it is. In Minnesota, that's a place where parking is at a premium. Okay, they just don't have a lot of parking around U.S. Bank Stadium in Minnesota, so you got to go to different parking garage. You got to you know, walk and get get over there. So, folks, that's it. you better get down there early or use. Um, in, in a place like Minnesota, you're using a uh, rail. You know, use the rail yeah. and, and get yourself over there. So, uh, Terrence Steele's going to be your left tackle. Okay, Terrence Steele's going to be your left tackle. Lel Collins is going to be your right tackle. Mike McCarthy spoke at his press conference today and, and and really went into, hey, what we've been doing, going back to camp. This is what we practice. 
Steele at the left, Collins at the right. So that's what they're going to go do on Sunday. Makes sense to me. I have, I have no issues with it at all. What, None. What happens, what happens when Tyron gets back? Lay, lay, let's say L.C. Uh, Collins, uh, Leo Collins is playing well at right tackle, really, really well. Back to the player that they that they saw when they gave him his contract, his new contract for fifty mil. Okay, he's playing well like that. What what happens? Is he going back to being the swing tackle? Is he going to left guard? Like where is he going? Because Tyra Smith's going to get a spot back when he when he's sure. when he's back and healthy in, in in the lineup. Great question, and. I would say, let's see. Let's see. We, we, you know, it's just it's a hypothetical. You truly have to see. Uh, what is it? Eye in the sky, don't lie. I mean, I mean, even if he's playing even, even if they're playing about on the same level, you got to fit a guy who you're paying to play that position, and then you got Terrence Steele. Okay. I think that's a weird position for Terrence Steele to be in when we've been talking about he's earned his 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 spot. He came in. He did exactly what he was, what he was supposed to do. And then now, these are great problems to have. Somebody else gets hurt, not him. Somebody else gets hurt, and he has a possibility, has a possible chance that he will never see the right tackle spot again. Okay, so I'll put it out this way: What if he goes out the left tackle? Tinger Steele, we're talking about, and just does a kick butt job. If he does a kick butt job at left tackle, and he's been doing a kick butt job here at right tackle. I could assume that Terrence Steele probably just gets right on back over there to the right tackle spot. And if LC is having a good run at right tackle, then the person who I might say you may want to may, may be worried would not be Collins in terms of coming off the field. Not having it. You talk about Tyron Smith? No. Oh, are oh, we talking about uh <laughs> Wait, you he, are we talking about the tackle position? Now you talking about guard? If if Steele plays well at left and Collins is playing well at right and Tyron's coming back, I can see all three of those guys there. But who's going to play the guard? Most like Collins. Oh, I was about to say, I, I thought you were getting there like somehow Tyron Smith is going to no, move into guard. No, I'm no, like, no, no. What I'm saying is 52 should be worse. Yeah, okay. I, okay. I'm if, like, if, yeah, if, if, if both guys are playing extremely well and you're going to say, you know what, I want all three of these guys out here on the football field. They give me the best opportunity to win. The person who could be the odd man out is Connor Williams because they've already basically started to set that up when Collins came back. I was about to say, but we knew that last week. Right. Get so, your three best guys. If you so, want the three best guys on there, then then he's out. Then, then Collins is playing left guard. So, so just kind of answering your question is, well, what are you going to do? I said, in my, in my mind, if if – both guys are playing well, and and you got Tyron back, and you can put all three on the line. The person who's gonna most who's gonna come out would be fifty two. That would be my thinking, based on how they have chosen to go about their business. So that's how I'm just kind of I'm just trying to connect dots. Here. Okay, listen, I, I, LC I, comes back to practice and they say, Nah, you need to practice at the tackle and the guard. Well, then you're setting it up. You're setting it up and you're saying, Okay, you know what? If we want to be stronger, we want to be better, and and you start thinking to the playoffs and. I keep coming back to someone like an Aaron Donald here, then then LC's probably gonna be that guy. Ooh, man, what you... I don't understand, by the way, about this whole switch switch is like Steele's never played left tackle. Like go back to his college days, he's always been a right tackle. At Texas Tech, four years, never played left tackle. So so that's interesting. That's you know also saying? interesting. So what happens like, if Collins Ta- played left tackle at LSU? So so what happens if Terrence Steele goes out here and stinks it up at left tackle? Does does he get knocked for that? So now, since he's getting beat at left tackle, do you knock him for his, at his performance and what he's showing you at right tackle? Is now he all of a sudden not as good as you thought he was because you switched him from right to left and he didn't play as well? I, it's, it's just a lot of stuff on. It's just it's just a saying, lot of stuff are, on the table. These, I'm just these saying are, these are good hypotheticals here. What's the one thing we know out, above all? We know Tanner Stills performed very well at the right tackle spot. Yes, we know this. Uh, position switch, um, going to the left. We've talked before right here on the players' lines. It's a challenge. Could, are there going to be – possibly. I'll say this. There's two good teams to go play against. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Von Miller's gone. You had to worry about Von Miller this week. So, and then it's Atlanta next week. So, it might, might be okay for two games. So, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. These are – this is – boy, to, to – 
to have Joe Philbin sit in a chair right now and the players lounge would be a lot of fun right now to just start to ask him some of these questions here. These are great questions. I don't know. What, what, but think, the eye in the sky will not lie. They'll get it on tape, and they'll see it, and they'll just start trying to make some make well, decisions. About at it. the end of the day, there's, there's a great opportunity for one young man to really put some money <laughs> in the account in these next uh, in these upcoming weeks, you got a guy who has shown that he could play right tackle, right at an extremely high level. Then you move him over to left tackle. Okay. He has an opportunity now to show that he can also play left tackle at an extremely high level. People get paid to just play one side, right? right? So this guy has an opportunity one to solidify his future in the NFL as a dominant tackle in the league. And now whatever team or us has an opportunity to say, hey, we, we need a help at the right or left tackle position, this guy can be either one of them. So oh, the, the great thing is Terrence Stills on a rookie deal, so so you're going to get some tremendous savings <laughs> and props to Will McClay and Joe Philbin for identifying a player and developing the player. And most of all, props to Terrence Steele, the player himself, because he had to do the work. These are problems you'd love to have. So good, good for the Dallas Cowboys. And let's, let's and good for Terrence. Good I'm for pray Terrence for still do right on the left side, man, because I don't even want it to come to where he had, you know, he has a slip up or something, and all of a sudden people start ranking on him because he didn't play well at left tackle and forgetting what he has done for the last five to six weeks over at the right tackle spot. Yeah, see, I'm, yeah I'm, it happens. I'm not. I'm not that worried about it. I'm, I'm really not. Uh, he, he did. I, mean, I go back to camp. Okay, and Seki was the guy running left, number two behind Tyre. And he got pulled out for steal. You could see him. And, and not that I'm trying to pat myself on the back here, but I'm just going back to when we first talked about him moving in and playing for LC. I said, hey, man, the, the guy was improving. He, he was an improved player amongst many that we saw at Cam. Like CeeDee Lamb was better than he was his rookie. Sean McEwen, the tight end. He was another one. We saw guys who, who the, from the year before, make jumps. You L- saw. Because, unfortunately, we didn't get to see. But you you were spot on with the improvements that you saw from Terrence Steele at, at, at training camp. Um, and that and then also just working and being around right. LC, being around Tyre Smith. You know, the old cliche, iron sharpens iron. You saw this guy was there, and he did the work. And, and I go back to the coaching, man. There, there's some good football coaches. Oh, absolutely. There's some good football absolutely. coaches. Joe, Joe Philbin, I'd probably say Bill Callahan's your number one guy if you're talking about O-line coaches in the game. Um, but Philbin's got to be a top five guy. When you start to think about just his work through the years at Green Bay, and and you know they uh, they they weren't one of these teams right here trying to pay for a lot of talent around here. They they developed a lot of young guys. How many top five coaches do you th- do you think we have on the roster right now? Ooh, we'll start start on defense. Okay, let's say okay. defensive coordinator. For, for is he a top five D coordinator for the, for the twenty twenty one season? Well, for the twenty twenty one season, he's definitely done an amazing job. Offensive coordinator. Definitely. Got top five guy, yeah. Tight ends coach. Definitely. <laughs> offensive, offensive line coach. <laughs> offensive line coach. The work, the work with Terrence Steele and also Biotish, yeah, because there's a lot of times where they're out there helping Biotish. Linebacker coach, who you've got a rookie linebacker, and then you got undersized guys playing. I mean, dang. Okay, so here's the deal on the linebacker coach. Which one are we talking about? <laughs> the linebacker coach, or are we talking about the special assistant? No, George Edwards is a linebacker coach. Let's be honest with you. That's, that's what I'm saying, Beam. Okay, the, the linebacker yeah, coach. The, the guys, George, George Edwards is the, li- the linebacker yeah, coaching staff. Okay, the, yes, the, <laughs> the staff linebacker because, coaching staff. Because George Edwards is technically not the, the linebacker. Okay, coach. the guys who are coaching the guys who are coaching the linebackers. <laughs> George Edwards is defensive the, line. You got well, you had Big Cat, but you got Dan Quinn. I'm just uh, yes. uh, across the board. You have guys who in the who in this season, not just because we're having a great season yes. offensively, and we only lost one game, but being able to help these players improve. Tremendously yes. from where they were last year, these coaches are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. The, the word to use here, and, and, and as a former player, you get this teachers. You're seeing guys being taught. And, and that's, that's where a guy like Terrence Steele is out here improving. You got some good teaching. I still go back to it. the play, it has to be within the player. Right. You know, as they said, this, you know, the lesson begins when the student is willing to learn. There's good teaching going on here. And if you are willing to accept it and willing to put in the work, you start to see what you're getting. Sean McEwen is a guy that 
Unfortunately, Cowboy fans have not gotten to see where he was at camp, and he was looking good. John McCune was – I looked at him and said, okay, there's a guy that and, – and, and obviously Dalton Schultz has got a heck of a decision to make after the year. But what I was watching from Sean McCune, I thought he was going on that same path where you saw Dalton Schultz get to. And I thought he was a better blocker because he – Came from right. Michigan where there was a running top of offense that Harbaugh was in. But I was looking at Sean McKinley, like, man, this is a guy that we're going to see him progress and say, boom, wow, they found another good player. Unfortunately, he got hurt. He's he's going to play this week, right. number 84. So the t- that's teaching. And also the willingness of the player to get better. And that's where Mike McCarthy probably hasn't got enough credit for. His ability to find people and also help teach. Because well, he got knocked because the guy he found last year on oh, defense. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, off. So this is this is a great comeback. This is a great, hey, man, look at yourself in the mirror. What did I do wrong? The guy's gone. Let me find somebody else who I think can be better. So you got one bad, and then now you got one really, really good, in my opinion. And if I'm going back and being fair, just based on that, let's look at the body of work for what Mike did going back into Green Bay. Because Ted Thompson was not a guy who, who wanted to go into the free agent market. Ted was all about draft and develop. And so for Mike McCarthy, having to play a lot of young guys, having to develop a lot of young guys, that was basically what he had to do in his tenure with with Ted Thompson. And I go back even into that year they won the Super Bowl. So that's just me being fair. Gotcha. Being fair. Hey, let's hit a break here. COVID is out here messing up some teams this week. Um your fancy lineup definitely is going to get affected. A whole lot of folks' fancy lineups going to be affected here. Also, power rankings in the NFL. We'll dive all into that. Danny McCray, Newey Scruggs, Barry Church with the day off. This is the Players' Lounge on DallasCowboys.com radio. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back, back to back, the back. Players' Lounge. All right. Download the Cowboys official app, the official app of the Dallas Cowboys, to get access to in-market game broadcasts, mobile tickets, daily podcasts, live pre- and post-game shows, game updates, and more. Download the app. Or uh, in the App Store or Google Play Store. So, right there. Go get it. Get it. Put it on your phone. Take it, take it with you, <laughs> wherever you go. This is the Players' Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. Our free agent safety, Barry Church, number 42. The Toledo Rocket is off today. But Danny McCray, the ultimate survivor, is here. I'm Dewey Scruggs. So, we're um, talking Cowboys as they get ready to face the Denver Broncos on Sunday. C.D. Lamb dealing with an ankle injury. Going to be limited. Dak Prescott will play. According to Mike McCarthy, that, that what they're doing right now, he's trending towards playing here, and so that's what they'll do. So, hey, um, cool. 
What about my man uh, Gallup? How, how close? How close is he? I, no, I wouldn't be looking for Gallup this week. Would you, are you looking for Gallup when he's healthy? I mean, since we're sure. on, we're, since we're on the oh, Terrence okay, Steele so and this, the <laughs> Tyron there, Smith. There is a great conversation that we were having in the press box. First, the person I was talking to was trying to say, let Cooper go in the offseason and keep Gallup. He, was he drinking? No, no. Okay. I mean, I, <laughs> no, I was, and, and these, the, you know, these are interesting because I just I wanted to hear it, and I said, so we all like Michael Gallup, but Amari Cooper is proven, proven Pro Bowl player. Gallup hasn't shown you that he's that. You can look at him and see there's potential. I said, but there's the bird in the hand, and you want to save some money. And hope that Michael Gallup can be what Amari Cooper is? I said, no. You give me that guy. Bill Belichick told me a whole lot on how they covered him in the Patriots game, of what he thought about Amari Cooper. And then, of course, this is all before the second half. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to say this is before he gets this, the this, game. Yeah, this is halftime. This is halftime. Yeah. And he's, like, oh, he's hurt. He's this. He's that. And I said, man, and this particular person was not here under the previous wide receiver. Right, wide receiver room. I said, man, it's a big old difference from what it used to be to what it is now. And I said, he is the leader of the pack. I feel that leadership is something people don't talk enough about and how guys go about their business. You get it because you've been in the room. Amari Cooper is a professional, man. It's a professional about the way he goes about the business. When you see a guy like Amari Cooper out there getting hurt, you know what that means? You better go play hurt, too. Mm -hmm. The guy's a pro. I just have an immense amount of respect for Amari Cooper, the individual player, and how he goes about his business. I'm just glad, as I'm on it, because I've been hard, not on Amari Cooper, but the usage, the way that we use Amari Cooper. Mm -hmm. And what we saw from him in the second half of the game is the receiver That's that we mean. all know that he can be. <laughs> we all know that. We know he's great. We know he's a great route runner. We know he has great hands. We know he has speed. We know all that. And we finally saw it. We finally saw it. Fade route, over the top. You got mossed. All right? This, these are the things that Amari Cooper can do, <laughs> things that we saw him do when he first got traded here. So the usage, to me, is is getting better, just like the usage of Ezekiel Elliott is getting better. Better. I think we're we're maximizing the potential of our twenty million dollar guy, a hundred million dollar. We're we're starting to see us use those guys how they should be used, and they're making the plays. Amar Cooper said he wants to be and show that he is a top receiver in the NFL. What he showed you in the second half of the Minnesota game, it's me. Didn't you love the the exchange between CeeDee Lamb and, and Amari Cooper for, for – I'm the, number one, player. No, I'm going to get this tug. I know I'm going to make this play. Go on over there, young fella. CeeDee Lamb, hey, you going to let me get this? Hell yeah. no. <laughs> what you think? That, no, uh-uh. this ain't no democracy. I'm the guy. And I and, and you love it, right? And, but they got that relationship to where you – know, he said it, but you know, it was more in, in, in a jokey, man. He knew Amari Cooper wasn't going to give it to him. But they have. you could tell that they have a good relationship throughout the entire room, which is great. So the conversation in the press box went from first half. Now, this person was trying to go on the trade market because he wasn't believing in Cooper Rush. So he wanted to go get a quarterback, wanted to uh, dump Cooper for, for Gallup, and then by the end was saying – I think that Michael Gallup will have a hard time getting back on the field because of what Cedric Wilson's done. I thought, well, you know, you know this, this person in the press, well, you didn't change the whole lot here in three hours. He's one of those people who's watching, who's just going, going, watching the game and watching a certain play be made. And I'm like, yeah, body of work. It's, it's about the entire body of work. Not what you're seeing, because people have good one-offs. People have good three or four game stretches. But when you have guys like Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, up to this point, Ezekiel Elliott, who have a body of work that you can go back 20, 15, whatever, 10 games, that's when you can say, all right, this is this is where I can put my real opinion on this. Not, you know, I, I watch the game and I see a guy make a great catch and it's like, oh, you know what, he's actually better than than the person uh, that he's playing uh, in, in, in spite of right now. That, that, that's not a fair way to assess the situation. Which leads me back into your original question about Gallup and Wilson. Cedric Wilson has earned his playing time the same way Terrence Steele has earned his playing time. Bill Parcells with one of the great – Lines of all time when he was a coach here. You don't want to leave the huddle because you don't know who's coming in. And Cedric Wilson deserves playing time. 
And Michael Gallup is just going to have to get back in there and fit in where he can and contribute where he can. This what a fantastic problem to have if you're Kellen Moore about all the weapons that are at your disposal. But this premise that – and this is one that a lot of people had. Hey, we'll cut Cooper after the season because he's making twenty million dollars, and we'll give we'll give Michael Gallup twelve <laughs> or fourteen million dollars, and and we'll just keep on trucking. No, this isn't. This is not analytics where you just want to look at numbers. The human element has to take a factor in here. When I look at Gallup, I think he's a. I like Michael Gallup. Okay, you like Michael Gallup. This is going to come down to finances, and Michael Gallup and his agent are going to try and go and get a bag. If you're in this league, man, and you want to get yourself paid, man, go do it by Smart all decision. means, okay? This Especially is, your first bag. Smart decision. Your, your first bag, and this is an opportunity for generational wealth, okay? I would not – if somebody's out there saying, hey, Michael Gallup, I'll pay you $12, $14, $15, 16000000 $16 million, man, <laughs> go. I won't be mad at you. Won't be mad at you. It's like with Jeremy Parnell, who had a, <laughs> had a little run like Terrence Steele's on right now, mm-hmm. got himself paid down there in Jacksonville as a tackle. Man, go get your bag. I look and say to myself – after the year, Cedric Wilson's a free agent. Michael Gallup's a free agent. You'd probably get Cedric Wilson at a lot cheaper rate here. I would bring back Cedric Wilson, and I would just tell I would tell Michael Gallup, man, we love you, but we know this is going to be your worth. Go get it. And I would bring back Amari Cooper. I want Amari Cooper's leadership and his mindset in that room. I want Amari Cooper leading the wide receiver room. I want Amari Cooper if you're going to use him like a $20 million receiver. That that's what I want. That's sure. the Amari Cooper that I want. If if you're not, well, don't waste his time and don't waste well, your money. But okay. we we've seen that it's starting to get to that point where Amari Cooper and CD Lamb are starting to be used as top receiver a uh, top receiving core in the league. But you, and that's the same. But you, what you said about Cooper was also the same argument that people were having about Ezekiel Elliott. Hey, if you're paying all this money, we'll utilize a player. And just to make you feel a little bit better, Danny. The amount of people in Minnesota who were screaming about the lack of usage from Jefferson, <laughs> you know, so so this this is kind of something that happens all around the league. You know, they're in Cleveland right now, complaining about how much they've pay, paid Odell Beckham Jr. And, and and what and how he's been used. So this is something that's just not uncommon. Unless you're in Tampa Bay, everybody's happy in Tampa Bay how they're getting used. And they and they taking pay cuts. They they, they they taking what they can get to be there. Unless right. you was already there on your contract, you come in there for, for for pennies on a dollar. Ask ask playoff Lenny. You know, uh, we, we Robert Woods was like, hey man, where, where's my touches here? Even though you know Cooper Cooper Cup by the way named the Player of the Month in the NFC. But you know, you just so everywhere you go, pretty much people are having questions about usage rates and how guys go. Speaking of, let my man Odell out of there, okay? Excuse from practice today. Where I don't see this as being fixable, so let him go. See if he clears waivers, and then uh, whoever's gonna pick because he's gonna get picked up. He's gonna get picked up either either off of waivers or once he clears, he's yeah. gonna be able to pick where he wants to go. But let him get out of there, man. One for you for for your sake, uh, Cleveland. Because this ain't helping your locker room, and it's definitely not going to help you on the field. It's too much attention outside of your performance on the football field. Two, let the, let him go, bro. <laughs> let him go. Let him go. Let him get out of there. He's an LSU guy, so I feel a little personal about it. But just let, let him go. Let him go. Let him make his own decision. Get, get somewhere where he got a quarterback. Can I tell you a part of me is just snickers at this? And here's the part of me that snickers at this. He wanted out of New York in the worst way. You know, he wanted, you know, he, he wanted out. Thought he was bigger. I'm not getting the that, 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 that. Folks, it can't get worse. It, 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 let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. It was pretty bad when, when he was with Eli, okay? It, he made some great catches, had some great seasons. But the New York Giants at that time were not good. Hey, look. So, you, 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 of course, he's in the same situation now. I want to see Odell with a good quarterback. He wants to be with a good quarterback. Cleveland has shown you took two of the top receivers in the league at their time, and neither one of them is being productive at so, the moment. So I've heard, I've heard Beckham to the Raiders. I've heard that. I, you know what? I, I think that's a cool. Um, surprisingly, I, the Colts popped in my head. I'm sitting no, here no, thinking no, 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 T.Y. Hilton no, no, is hampered. No, no. no. Why? Because he don't want to go – you got, you got another cool, okay. If I'm, if I'm, if, no, I'm not saying where he wants to go. I'm talking about people who need uh, no, offensive no, I'm, weapon. I'm talking about where he wants to go because oh, if, no, they uh, cut, if they cut him now, you've got control. yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm, well, I, at first he has to clear waivers, and then 
and then they can pick him up. I, I'm assuming he'll clear waivers because that's fifteen million dollars. It is. So, it so is. I, but I, I think there's gonna be it's gonna be some people that want him. I'm sure Cleveland was asking for something crazy to get Odell because they said they were they were putting out the trade offers and nobody was saying that it was something they were interested in. Maybe somebody will take that fifteen million million dollar hit to get Odell so they don't have to risk not getting him. Right? If you think that Odell is that missing piece to you turning the corner or being a better team and uh, making a, a run into the playoffs, then Maybe you do spend 15. I've got two teams, okay? I've got two teams. No, no, I three. I got three teams. Three teams, if I'm Odell Beckham Jr. and I'm a free agent, that I go look at. All right? Let's hit the break. I'll come back. I'll give you my three teams, and you tell me whether or not your LSU brother is going to w- w- take one of these three opportunities. Okay. He is Danny McCray. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is Players Lounge on DallasCowboysRadio.com. Organic pumpkin smoothies are back at Smoothie King. With at least 13 grams of protein each and five options to choose from, it's easy to find a favorite to help you reach your goals. Like the new Keto Champ Pumpkin. Packed with a whopping 23 grams of protein and nine net carbs, it's a quick and nutritious meal on the go. So order online or through the app for pickup or delivery. And power up with pumpkin and protein. Official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Smoothie King, rule the day. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with... And I'm Jay Novacek, and we're both with... United United Ag and Turf, Turf, the official tractor provider of the Dallas Cowboys. So, if you need a tractor to bale some hay, a mower to cut some grass, or a gator to get some chores done... Get a John Deere at United Ag and Turf. And then, let's get to work. Hey, Jay, that's my line. (laughs) Well, not today. Get to work with a John Deere tractor package that's just right for you and your budget. Visit UnitedAgandTurf.com. Back to the Players' Lounge. Cowboy fans, join the NFL in supporting our nation's service members by wearing the latest Dallas Cowboys Salute to Service gear. Visit your local Dallas Cowboys Pro Shop or shop.dallascowboys.com, a Fanatics experience, to get the full assortment of Salute to Service gear. And I tell you, goes fast. So if you want it, get it in there because it's, this is not one of those items they keep in stock. When it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> okay, because every year they come up with new. It's not. It's not. It's not the same stuff every year. So they come up with new stuff every year. So if you want to get it, go get it. I made that mistake one time. <laughs> never, never again, huh? <laughs> I made that. Hey, I like that, y'all. That's gone. gone. What? What? Yeah, we got a we got it in a large. Like I don't fit in no large. <laughs> so well, asking, then, yeah, y'all then, got some in the back now. Nah, that is you, it. Then you not get it. <laughs> so. If you do like the salute to service gear, if you see some of it, man, go go snag it up there, Cowboy fans. All right, uh, let's dive back into Odell Beckham Jr., who, as you, you spoke about, Cleveland has basically said, stay away. That, uh, you know, his their, their bottom line, going after your quarterback, that's not what they want. They don't want that. And it's not the first time Odell Beckham Jr.'s had these types of issues. In, the, in New York, he was frustrated with Eli Manning, and he wanted to get traded. They traded him to uh, – The Browns got a new contract, and he's basically vanished. He has vanished. What what, what receiver has it vanished up there in Cleveland? Look. I I mean, just – I mean, whatever. He was getting yards up there with with Eli, at least sometimes. This one is just total – yeah, I don't – one, you're in New York, so you're in that major media market, um, and you've played – and Odell was very fortunate. To, his greatest catches happen to be on primetime television and usually against the Cowboys. Yeah. So that's gone. When you go to Cleveland, okay, you, you, you're you Mr. 12 o'clock. 
Okay, you did 12 o'clock game in Cleveland. That's just how it is, and you're facing teams that are not in the the NFC East has the big media markets. New York, Philadelphia, Washington, Dallas. You think of it, New York's number one. Okay. Dallas is number four. Philly's number five. DC's probably nine. What about Cleveland? <laughs> when I worked in Cleveland, it was number eight, dropping fast. Mm. Or maybe it was 12. I think it was 12, it was dropping fast. Cincinnati. He could at least give him a progressive commercial. Pittsburgh. He can't, he can't get him a commercial with Baker. Well, well, progressive is right there in, 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 in Cleveland, and apparently they didn't want him. So here are my three teams. If Odell Beckham Jr. is cut and becomes a free agent, Kansas City. You're playing, with, you're playing with Patrick Mahomes. You know Andy Reid can scheme guys up. Tyreek Hill's on one side. Hey, some single coverage for Odell Beckham Jr. with a quarterback that can get you the football. Protect the quarterback, and yeah, that, that'll be that'll be a, a, a really good addition for them because they're missing. That is what they are missing, somebody to take the, the eyes off of Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. All right, number two, the Los Angeles Rams. Do they have anything else to get? <laughs> nah, <laughs> free agent. <laughs> free is there any oh, oh, Okay, if, if he clears waivers. Okay, okay, if he said clears waivers. Okay, yeah, free okay, agent. okay, all right. No, no, free agent. So, so the Rams. You're not going to get paid any money, but you got a quarterback, and they're, I, they're, just, they're, they're, they're like being a number three guy. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think he's going to pick. Oh, well, yeah. Well, well, uh, being now, a number three guy, I okay. don't think so. He's now, out of there because he's not getting targets. Now, he's going to be a number three guy. Now, now I got a place where he'll probably be the number four guy, but the quarterback can get you the football. Tampa, yes, no. Bro. And and uh, now keep in mind here. Here's what this is my thought process because I'm, I'm I'm Odell's agency. Odell, we need to we need to fix the perception. Playing with quarterbacks who can get you the football help fix the perception because we believe you can play. You just need to get the ball. And these are three different offenses where you've got quarterbacks who know how to get the ball to the open man. These are also three offenses where you're going to get single coverage. Single coverage, playoff team, on TV, boom, after the season, we can place you someplace. Do you think the Saints will pick him up before? Teams are able to compete for him on a free agent market. No, because I don't see the Saints wanting to pay. I don't. I don't know about their salary cap in order to absorb that. Michael money. Thomas ain't playing that no more. But right, I mean, right. you, but, but, you, but, you can count that as released. And I go, I go back what I spoke about quarterback play. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about them picking him up. No, not him choosing. Not them. No, not I, him I choosing. I don't see the Saints doing that from the standpoint of the salary. You gotcha. got you. You wanted. You know. You got to go pick up the money. It's like when Jalen Smith. Nobody was trying to pick up the nine. You're not trying to pick up the fifteen from him. Yeah, you know what I mean? They missing, they missing the receiver now. They, they, I, they're going to pay for us somewhere. I, I, this is just me. I don't see it. I gotcha. don't see it. That's just me. I, I just don't watch see Watch the Colts, man. Watch the Colts. Watch the, I mean, I'm just saying, just just watch them. They, they, the Colts have been feeling like they're one Carson, play away, one Carson play away. Wentz is bad. He's, He's been playing better. Bad. He's been playing better since he got since he since he got back in the. Did lineup. you not see that 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 pick he? Threw? I know I, uh, yeah, that's a pick, but I'm saying he's been playing better. Well, they went like three games in a row or something at one point. They like they, 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 they and and they're also the, in the division where the Texans, the uh, Titans, who just lost their uh the, their all time running back, so they're they're still in a position to compete to win that division. If you think that you just need one. One guy, one piece, then I mean, o- Odell's there. Carson gonna throw him the ball. It might be an interception. He's gonna throw it to him. Got good you, defense is playing decent. He got, listen, he, to get out of Cleveland, uh, he, he'll be okay. I, I don't think that's a bad, a bad choice, a bad spot for him to end up at. All right, uh, with our time left here, we'll, we'll do power rankings tomorrow. Uh, COVID news. Aaron Rodgers, obviously, uh, uh, boy, he got. Uh, He's immunized. Yeah, he got lit up, as he should have been. Should be lit up. Uh, Saquon Barkley, he's got COVID. He's been vaccinated, but he has COVID. He's out. And I just go back to after, since his rookie season, breakout rookie season, it's just been downhill. Has there been anything good that's happened to Saquon Barkley, man? I remember they was comparing the Zeke thing and all that stuff. Zeke, healthy. True. I also go back and think about the fanfare that Saquon Barkley and Baker Mayfield had after their rookie years and, and all the commercials and everything. That, neither guy has lived up to it. Man. At this point in time, I can't see Saquon Barkley getting a second contract. Even when, Listen, and the truth is, even when Saquon was healthy, it was a splash. 
He wasn't going out there and changing games or whatever. He, you see him break an 80-yard run, but consistent. And I'm comparing him to Zeke at this point because that's who they were comparing. Hey, he's going to be better than, than Zeke. Consistently being able to do what we, we talked about yesterday, which is in, impose your will on defenders and have them nervous and, and scared to tackle you in the fourth quarter. I don't see that as Saquon's uh, uh, type of running style. The premise of Saquon Barkley was based off Ezekiel Elliott. That's what the Giants were thinking. Hey, let's go do what they did here. Let's go get a difference maker, a guy who can help our quarterback. He can catch it. He can run it. He, but he ain't the and, same guy. And, and for one season, they were on point. They haven't been on point since. And I go back to the chat. Here was really the conversation for the Giants that year, the draft. Sam Darnold or Saquon Barkley? They made the right choice. And it looks like... Well, Sam's been traded, and the owner's out here trying to get Deshaun Watson. Hey, hey. <laughs> so he's, he's not for long. So he's, <laughs> The Jets clearly didn't give him a second contract. And if you're the Giants, I just don't know how you can give Saquon Barkley another contract. Uh, a just based contract on health based and on availability. Health. Just, yeah. Right. You, you just can't do it here. So uh, these situations get, can, get, get, get tough, man. They AJ, get tough. Green. AJ, AJ Green. AJ Green. He's on my fantasy team as well. And uh, and the thing is, like when you start hearing these names pop up, then you like automatically assume – there's going to be another one. Then there's going to be another one. Then there's going to be another one. And then now you start like, who are they going to have to play? Like, who's who? what big-time players are going to be out? And then how are you going to, to to adjust and be able to adapt to having somebody like a, the Packers when they had to play without Devontae Adams? And this is why the immunization, I mean, the, the vaccinations matter. You know, Aaron Rodgers, you got to be down 10 days. The day before the next game is when he's going to be able to come back. Okay. Not this game. He has this game, and, and then the day, the Saturday before they play on next Sunday is the day he can come back. And so now, what happens when you get into January? You get into February when you're trying to compete for a Super Bowl and you're not vaccinated. People are like, oh, it's not in your business. No, this is the team's business. This is – this basically the teams are the public entity in a lot of ways, man. The Cowboys, that's this is the this is the city. This is their yeah, so it's gonna matter. It's gonna matter here. And if you're not available, and you're gonna miss 10 days, and you can potentially miss a playoff game. Or, or a, Super Bowl. A Super Bowl? <laughs> okay. Go ahead and tell everybody exactly, you know, it's my choice, my body. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead when you're Trying to tell people to go, hey man, go get shot up and go play. You know all these other guys mm-hmm. out here. It's 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 a hard thing to uh, to stomach because Jordan Love hey, gonna get your opportunity, but he's not Aaron Rodgers. Not not today. Not today. It's not Aaron Rodgers today. We saw what Aaron Rodgers could do with dudes all gone. Hey, you're out, Adams. You're out. Fine. Just make it happen. Twelve. Here I am. You know, bam. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of work for my man uh, Aaron Jones and Dylan. Th- those two dudes will probably get twenty carries a piece. Yeah, you've, you've put a lot on your team, so all right, that's our time. Uh, Mick shots coming up at the bottom of the hour. Danny McCray, the ultimate survivor. Appreciate you being in. Barry Church. Uh, hopefully he's back tomorrow. Uh, he's playing daddy duty today, and uh, good luck to his little man as he tries to uh, feel a little bit better here. I'm Newy Scruggs. We'll chat to you twelve thirty on Friday right here on DallasCowboys.com Radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?